Hi, how are you all doing in this pandemic? I hope you are doing well, staying safe and healthy. How are you improving your ability to speak English? Are you seeking actively opportunities to improve your English? Are you seeking feedback and input and corrections from others? In this video, I talked about how important it is for you to seek actively and proactively opportunities to correct your pronunciations or wrong use of grammar or wrong usage of English words. I conducted an interview with teacher Rebecca Davis. I got to meet her for the very first time in Myanmar about three months ago. And since then, we've been good friends, uh, praying for uh, each other and, and lifting up each other in many ways. Uh, she graciously agreed to appear in my video. So I'm very thankful to her. So let's check out the interview. I hope you enjoy the interview as much as I enjoy the interview myself. I am very excited uh, today to have a guest uh, uh, in this video about seeking feedback and uh, corrections. Today I have uh, Rebecca Davis. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Rebecca Davis uh, is a wonderful English teacher who has taught in so many different places, including Myanmar, where I actually got to meet her for the very first time. Okay. And I mean, we've known each other for only a few months, maybe since March. So it's been about two to three Was months. Was it March? Wow. Yeah, it's back in March. Time flies, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, uh, COVID-19 broke out and I had to come back. So we've been kind of, uh, I don't know, got a little spaced out uh, because of the COVID-19, but now we're back together. So um, for my subscribers, would you please tell uh, them a little bit about yourself and what you do and uh, how you have like traveled to different uh, places uh, you know, to teach and maybe experience different cultures. I am an ESL teacher. That's English as a second language. Um, I'm a licensed teacher in North Carolina, America. Mm -hmm. And I use that as I go around the world to um, teach in different places, uh, third worlds mostly. But yes, I use that um, because the students there need the English to be able to study for full degrees. Mm -hmm. So um, I use my education background and I go in and I um, create whatever curriculum they might need for a novice, um, beginning, intermediate, advanced. It could be speaking, listening, reading, writing. It all depends on their levels, all depends on their needs, and all depends on um, what they're actually going to use with all of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you address the whole nine yards of the English language and you're very uh, proficient and experienced uh, teacher and it seems like you adapt well to the levels of you know whoever you are teaching. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, in this video I you know talk about how it's so important for people to intentionally uh, reach out to native speakers or those who are proficient in English for feedback or even corrections. I remember a time when I was um, an interpreter and also college minister at a local church e in Texas. So, um, you know, the way uh, we had our service was very, quite unique because we had two different, uh, well, actually we had one congregation that consisted of English speaking people and non-English speaking people, so Korean speaking people, because right. we had a lot of mixed marriage couples, right? So um, my pastor, senior pastor, gave a sermon in Korean, and I stood right next to him providing English translation of his Korean sermon. Mm -hmm. uh, so right after the service was over, a good friend of mine and also a church member, a deacon, came, walked up to me and, and, to and told me this, John, um, you have one uh, word that you uh, did not pronounce correctly. And, you know, I was... Uh, at a level uh, uh, in terms of English, uh, where I felt pretty comfortable about my English, and I, but still, you know, I try to remain uh, teachable. So I was open to, you know, his comments. He, uh, his name is Alan. So, Alan, what was it? And he said, 
we don't pronounce、uh, S H E P H E R D as shepherd. We pronounce it as shepherd, not as shepherd. Because you know、oh. there's a ph, and I somehow thought that ph is you know pronounced as f instead of p, so I ended up saying you know shepherd instead of shepherd. So, and immediately I thanked him for correcting my English pronunciation. And without him, I would have I might still be pronouncing it as shepherd, shepherd, when I should have said you know shepherd, right? So that is one、uh, instance of. Someone uh, caring uh, enough about me、uh, so that he actually corrected me, and I, I think that is the kind of correction, the kind of feedback I think we need to, you know, seek. But if you have a good friend, a、uh, native speaker, or you know, someone who really、uh, is good at English,、uh, I think might be able to correct you without creating any conflict or hard moments, right? So can you kind of share some light on that? Or from your experience, has there been any student who reached out to you intentionally for that、uh, purpose? Um, I don't know that there's been anybody that's reached out as a student because a student generally doesn't question the teacher. Right.、Um, in that regard, but what happened with what with what you had just said、mm -hmm. with the PH is. That goes from the novice level all the way into the advanced level of English,、mm -hmm. because the PH can be, in,、uh -huh. in the scientific terms,、uh -huh. in the Latin terms, can be pronounced F. But if you are bringing in the French or the Germanic、mm -hmm. part of English,、mm -hmm. then it can be pronounced as a P, or、uh -huh. um, as a. A, a. There's another pronunciation for it, which you wouldn't have known that unless you had studied it, right? Right. So a lot of people who are actually、um, self-taught、mm -hmm. don't know the basic rules. That's not wrong. It's just、um, if I'm trying to learn Thai or if I'm trying to learn Burmese, I wouldn't know it either, right? I don't know that there are th. Actually, the h's are silent mm -hmm, mm -hmm. unless I'm there.、Right. So you have to、um, have people that you're comfortable with、right. that will correct you, but. I would say if you're going to go in for the correction, I have、mm -hmm. done this、um, when I was learning sign language. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm not good at reading it, which means I cannot see it and know exactly what they're saying. But I can say what I need to say.、Um, when I was learning it, I had people who would constantly、um, correct, and then I had other people who would not correct, who would let me finish what I was saying and then、mm -hmm. correct. That I would say find people. Um, who will let you finish what you're saying? Right. Go back and have that level of comfort because,、um, for me and for what I've seen from others,、um, the majority of the time, if you get interrupted in the middle of it,、mm -hmm. you lose that.、Mm -hmm. You don't not only lose the confidence, but you lose the train of thought, and,、right. and sometimes it cuts it off. Mm -hmm. But if they let you go through and then they go back and explain it later,、mm -hmm. that、um, after you're finished with your thought, you're like, oh, okay. And then if you're really comfortable,、um, repeat it. Right. That way,、um, you don't have the wrong one in, inside your head.、Mm -hmm. You're not creating a track that's wrong. You're creating a track that is correct. Yeah, I think that's very helpful piece of advice. You know, have someone finish what he or she intended to say, and then after that, you know, you could、uh, maybe. Make a comment on the wrong pronunciation or wrong、uh, use of grammar or usage of a certain word. And you also,、um, a lot of places that I've been, they don't have native speakers. Right. So right. you have to、um, you have to find people who are good enough,、mm -hmm. not always perfect,、right. but good enough that you can.、Uh, what does the Bible say? Iron sharpens iron. Yes. So that you can you can help each other out. Mm -hmm. You know, not always where you're being led, but、right. sometimes you have to work together.、Yep. And then another thing is, is find somebody that you're comfortable with,、mm -hmm. and that、um, they're you don't feel that they're going to be putting you down, or that you're going that you're better than they are, or something like that. But、right. find somebody that you're equal with, whether you're as good as they are or not.、Mm -hmm. 
you know, yeah, that, so, that doesn't matter. Yeah, in my school, I have uh, colleagues who care uh, a lot about me and who are friends uh, with me. Uh, I can think of Dr. Cheryl Stewart. So Cheryl is someone who uh, has been a great, you know, colleague and friend uh, to me. Uh, so when I make a, a mistake or when I mispronounce certain words, uh, she will actually uh, bother to, you know, point them out because she cares about me and because she wants me to succeed. Right. And also she was the one who told me that you have to give permission to others so that people right. can actually correct you. Especially, yes, you, you, you know, let's say you have, uh, you know, in my case, I have a PhD and I, I, I teach. And, and so people sometimes might not uh, find it easy to, you know, correct me uh, because, the, you know, I don't know, I might feel a little uh, uncomfortable uh, by, you know, people approaching me with <laughs> correct pronunciation. But, you know, when, if I give them my permission to do, you know, right. to correct, then uh, it's for my sake and it's for my growth, right? right. And, and also they uh, care about me and they will take the time to uh, correct me. So I encourage I, others to do it as well. I would also say with that accountability, uh -huh. um, have somebody that you're comfortable enough to say, you're over correcting me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I, I really want your correction, but at this point, this can be done or this can't be done, but uh -huh. you're over correcting me. Okay. So okay. please let me, let me just try and let's move <laughs> on and come back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I guess it all depends on at what level your English is. If mm -hmm. you are at an advanced level, I don't think there will be too many instances of correction. But if you are at a starting, like, you know, at yeah, either immediate well, that or... that comes, yeah, that comes from trying to learn tonal languages. Right, right. And it's like, you know, <laughs> Americans, we don't hear it. And so yeah. it took me two years to hear different uh -huh. uh, Thai tones. Mm. And, I, and now that I've been away for a few years, I probably wouldn't hear them as well now again. Uh -huh. But yeah, I had some Thai teachers that... Even obviously they had permission because they were my Thai teachers, but right. it was, you know, after the tenth time of repeating something that I didn't hear the first time, <laughs> we had to move on. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. It's so true. I tried. And, yeah, yeah, you tried. And you know, English is uh, not an easy language to learn. No, uh, so no, it's not. It takes a lot of persistency and also a courage and you know uh, that uh, grit. You know. Uh, Angela yeah. Dirtworth talks about how we need to, you know, continue to show up and continue to, you know, work on the language. Well, one thing you just said is English is not an easy language, and I agreed with you. However, mm -hmm. if you um, if you think that it's hard, it's going to be very difficult. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But if you break it down into easy parts and and try to work through those it's a lot more attainable. Mm, that's true, yeah. Yeah, yeah. for me, you know, I, I love the English language. So it's been a, a sheer joy of studying. Mm. And, and even now, I mean, I never think that I have arrived when it comes to English or speaking in English. Neither uh, do we. <laughs> even, even though I had to, you know, develop some level of confidence. So I feel uh, a little comfortable when I speak in English, but uh, I always try to, you know, seek ways to improve uh, my English, especially, you know, the ability to speak English. Um, so let's see. Uh, in my book, uh, on, I mean, there's a chapter on seeking feedback and also giving people permission to correct your English. Um, so I think we kind of address that uh, just now. And do you happen to have any like words of encouragement for my subscribers? And I'm sure that some of my subscribers are uh, you know, s students or people in Myanmar or from Korea and, and, and some of them are from the United States. And my uh, subscribers, you know, the number of subscribers uh, has been slowly but gradually increasing. And I'm very thankful for that. And, uh, you know, by the grace of God, I might be able to have more, uh, you know, subscribers in the future. But, you know, uh, getting more subscribers is one thing. Uh, but having uh, an impact, uh, you know, in the lives of people through uh, this YouTube channel is another. So I really hope that uh, people will be able to benefit from, you know, uh, these videos that I create. And, and today you are part of that effort. And I'm very thankful. 
uh, you know, to you for, you know, appearing in my video. Thank you. Do you, so do you want a, a word of encouragement? Is that what yes, you were saying? Yeah, yes, yeah, that's what I was asking, yes. Um, if I had to encourage the students, I would say start journaling or start mm -hmm. writing down what you're mm -hmm. saying mm -hmm. from day one and date it. And then after two weeks, look back and realize how much you've learned. Mm -hmm. And after a month, look mm -hmm. back because I've done that with my students. They didn't know what we were doing. I, I would make them date it and I would make them write everything down mm -hmm. for multiple pur purposes. But then after we got um, into a month, I would say, now look back. This mm -hmm. is how much you have learned. So it's always encouraging, even, even to me, when I can look back and say, oh, okay, I've learned this much. I, I, actually, I actually do know something because it's, it is a mountain that you're conquering. Mm -hmm. You're only going to do it one step at a time. Right. And so, it's, yeah. And each time you can look back and say, yeah, I got that. It's mm -hmm. another step you've taken forward. It's almost like uh, the proverbial question, like, how do you eat a, 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 an elephant, right? Right. Uh, yeah, How do you yeah. mean what? <laughs> an elephant. Eat <laughs> <laughs> <He> an elephant? <laughs> I can break them into bite size, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you okay. You don't mean an elephant, but, <laughs> but like when you have a um, gigantic, you know, uh, obstacle uh, to overcome, you have to, you know, break them into <laughs> <laughs> by size uh, tasks. Uh, yeah. I hope yeah. that makes sense. Uh, <laughs> it does. It does and, make sense. Yeah. I've never thought about eating an elephant before, but <laughs> it does make sense. Yeah. But um, I, I think, you know, what you said uh, about writing a journal, especially, you know, English learning journal and, and, mm -hmm. and see how you have, you know, progressed uh, from day one to say, you know, one month or even like later, you can always go back and, and, and check what you have learned. And I think that might be very helpful as well. Yeah, it's always amazing as a teacher when you, uh, I know what I'm going to be doing, but they mm -hmm. don't. Right. So when I do have them go back, it's always amazing to watch their faces. Mm -hmm. And when they realize how much they have learned, it's, it's, it's fun as a teacher because mm -hmm. you get to see the amazement. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, so first you said uh, write a journal, and what else? What other device do you have? Or other? Or, well, I guess I said a one word of encouragement. That's why I think you limited yourself to one word. But do you happen to have anything else uh, for my subscribers? Um, even though it's not highly occur encouraged in a lot of societies, mm -hmm. brag a little bit. I see. You know and. And um, let somebody know that you've learned. Mm -hmm. uh, let somebody know. Brag okay. a little bit and let other people brag on you. I see. Mm -hmm. So blow your own horn, so to speak, right? Yeah. <laughs> but in a good way. In a good know? way, right, right. Yeah, Never in a prideful way. That's right. Yeah. yeah, I think that's one of the uh, things that I've picked up as well as a, a cultural value. You know, people who grew up uh, in an Asian context or even, I don't know, in an Afghan context, it's very difficult for you to brag a little bit about yourself in a positive way. We mm -hmm. always uh, were taught to be modest and to be humble, mm -hmm. never, humble. you know, mm -hmm. um, get prideful. Uh, because yeah. when you stick up or when you try to like speak up uh, your mind, they try to like hammer you down. Uh, mm -hmm. So we were culturally conditioned not to differ, not to uh, stand out. Uh, although, in, uh, for me, I have lived here in the United States and I've been exposed to the American culture or European culture long enough, so I know the differences. So I can adapt, you know, depending on the context. But right. uh, for a stutters, I think it's very important to be able to yeah. brag a little bit about yourself, yeah. Or if, if you're in a class environment, teach them to brag on each other, hmm. you know? And don't compete, uh -huh. you know, but to brag on each other instead, to bring the positive to it. Yeah, yeah the competition, yeah, I've, oh, of course I've used that, you know, it's, it's uh -huh. a great tool, but, the com but I don't bring in the competition as a negative thing. Right. We bring it in, um, bring the bragging in so that everybody's being elevated. 
I see. Yeah, yeah that's right. Awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah, based on what you have said so far, I think you're a wonderful teacher. <laughs> Craig, you got a little about you. <laughs> Thanks. You're, you're quite welcome. <laughs> oh, well, it's been such a delight to uh, spend some time with you and uh, hear from you the importance of you know seeking feedback and also asking for corrections. And, and, and you know those two pieces of advice are, I think, very helpful for my uh, subscribers. I really appreciate. Oh, thank that. you. That's been great. Yeah, it's been awesome. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the interview that I conducted with teacher Rebecca Davis. So I hope that you will be able to actively seek out opportunities to improve yourself, especially by seeking out comments and feedback and also corrections from others, people you feel comfortable with. In my next video, I'll be talking about how you need to learn gestures and facial expressions and even micro messaging. Until then, stay safe and keep daring to speak.